Welcome to the Relationship Recovery Podcast, hosted by Jessica Knight, a certified life coach who specializes in narcissistic and emotional abuse. This podcast is intended to help you identify manipulative and abusive behavior, set boundaries with yourself and others, and heal the relationship with yourself so you can learn to love in a healthy way. Hello, and thank you for being here. Before we dive into the topic of love bombing, I wanted to go over my offerings. I've been getting a few questions from people saying, how do I work with you? And so one-on-one coaching is available, but my schedule is pretty tight. So if you want one-on-one coaching, you just have to be flexible scheduling wise, but we can always figure out a way to make it work. Evening times for the Eastern time zone are pretty packed. Daytimes are available and I do work select weekend days. If one-on-one coaching is not right for you, or if you feel like you're not ready for that just yet, my relationship recovery course will help you understand and validate yourself if you are being abused and begin to set some boundaries with that person so you can create space for yourself to think, to heal, to figure out what to do. If you are just looking to set boundaries with a toxic person, specifically an abusive relationship, my Boundaries Deep Dive is available. There's two more offerings that are coming. One, the no contact course. And two, what next? And likely I think that's what I'm going to call it, but it's about, all right, I decided I want to leave. Now what? Details for that should probably be out I don't know, I want to say about April, but if you are curious about it, just sign up for my newsletter. If you go to emotionalabusecoach.com, there's a free offering for 50, not 50, sorry, 20-ish canned responses for diffusing conflict with the toxic person. Download that and that will automatically add you to my email list. That's emotionalabusecoach.com. So getting into the topic for today of love bombing. Now, I have not talked about this much because I actually hate the term. I don't think it feels like love bombing. I think it feels like a very inaccurate projection of who this person is. I would prefer to call it like this is when the mask is on. I don't know. Love bombing is really, I struggle with it because not every abusive relationship starts with it. It could start with like a lot of confusion, but also a lot of future faking. So I wanted to unpack it today because I think a lot of people are very confused about what this means if they're being love bombed, if they were love bombed. And I think it's important because I think a lot of us try and get back to that place that we once had with the toxic person. I believe that part of our trauma bond is that we become addicted to who that person showed, what that person showed us for the first three months or six months or whatever it is. Like that's what we try and bring the entire relationship back to. And when we can't, we blame ourselves and on goes the cycle. So in diving in today, I reflected back on how other clients have told me what love bombing feels like. I have kept a list over time of things people said because Everyone describes it differently, and I do really believe they say it so well. So I'm going to read a few of those. I felt uncomfortable. Being showered with actual love shouldn't make you feel uncomfortable. When I said I was uncomfortable for how how fast it was moving, they tried to make me feel bad. I felt uncomfortable and unsure, but... He made me feel like I was going to miss out on something great if I passed him up. I was naive and I caved and it almost cost me my life. He was courting me like a romance novel. If we fought and he thought I was about to leave, he'd return to the romance novel. But during fights, he would be a complete monster and do anything to hurt me. Everything I did in the beginning was amazing. He even got excited about my favorite movies. Three months later, he didn't even remember it. He said I was the perfect match because we liked the same cocktail. 
I was starved emotionally as a child. So when someone told me that they loved me, I couldn't let it go. The moment I became dependent on it, it went away. I'm sure that a lot of us can see ourselves in those recollections. So taking a step back, what is love bombing? Love bombing is what happens when in a new relationship, a narcissist or a toxic person showers the other person with person with so much love that it's really too much for getting to know someone. And for the person receiving it, we feel really good and we are excited to be getting all this attention, but it's actually quite manipulative because the other person becomes dependent on this amount of love, this new amount of like intense love. And so at the beginning, when it feels like too much too soon and the other person is telling you that that's okay, like it's all right, like this is where we're at. It's not a healthy, this is where it's at. It's like a, I feel uncomfortable and this person keeps telling me it's fine. So I'm going to lean into it because I don't know what else to do. But if it's feeling like it's too much too soon, it probably is. And it's excessive flattery and kind gestures that are used to make like this negative thing, like this like very fake thing feel justified or that it's not a big deal. And so I've had a lot of clients that have said like, he's doing all the things and he's saying all the things that I want to hear. And I feel like this is, I'm on like a roller coaster really fast, but you know, I want to stay on it. And it's like in a healthy partnership, it does take some time to get to know someone. So it can be confusing and you can feel, a lot of us feel like we're being crazy. Like, why are we not accepting it? But it, we're getting everything that we wanted, right? So we're feeling love, we're feeling adored, we're feeling taken care of. And so as the relationship goes on, you might notice that they are texting you constantly, that they want to see you constantly. They want to meet your friends immediately. They might talk about plans in the future or what they're going to do with you or how you're going to be together forever or how you're perfect. But usually the mask starts to fall off within a few months because after the narcissist makes you feel special to the point where you feel obligated and dependent with this person, you don't notice that things are starting to change because you're so addicted to that image. So things might be falling away but especially within three months, four months, five months, that you just had three months of probably something that was sort of amazing if you're being love bombed, right? So one month of something happening, all right, two months, all right, but you keep looking back and it doesn't feel the same anymore. Other people have told me that they've been bombarded with gifts and that their relationship like, is filled with compliments. They say exactly what you want to hear. And you ex expect a lot of time and attention with them. They put you on a pedestal and you put them on a pedestal too. A lot of times people will say things like, you're my soulmate. You're perfect. You complete me. I've never met anyone like you. I never will meet anyone like you. But in time, you'll start to see the relationship change. And I typically say if it happens around the three month mark, because the narcissist can't keep the mask on that long. So around three months is when things usually start to slip because he or she no longer can fake it. Like the mask will start to fall off. When people say it takes 90 days to get to know someone, that's why. So you'll start to notice some things like they might become very clingy. There might be an intensity around it. You might feel like you are overstepping your own boundaries constantly. They might need continuous reassurance and so will you, and they will be unable to keep that facade. So at times you might be like, where is this person? Like, who is this person? Where did the person go? And they're gone. I was interviewed for parade.com a while ago, maybe about a month ago. And one of the questions that they asked me was, can love bombing be innocent? And I replied that we often know when we're not being authentic. I know I know when I'm not being authentic. Like when I'm sort of putting on the mask, it's actually exhausting for me because I'm an introvert and very sensitive. And like when I have to put that mask on, I'm typically exhausted after. And it's not like a narcissist mask. It's like a, you know, I imagine if, like if I had to go to like a very busy 
convention or event or when I've had to do a few speaking events, I'm exhausted afterwards. Like it takes so much energy to get me there and so much energy to get me back to normal. It's that's just who I am. And so I know when I'm stepping out of my authenticity and when we are trying to be that person, like when we are not being authentic, we're trying in love bombing relationships, we're trying to be somebody we're not to convince somebody else to be with us. And so I don't think it can be necessarily innocent because that person has to know on some level that even if they can maintain this for a little while, this good behavior, this confident behavior, this love, that they can't keep it long term. And now there's so much more underneath that. And I definitely think that there probably are people that have no idea and they want to show up and be that person and they want to be, you know, a good partner and all those things. And they realize that they can't, but when they realize they can't, they're not, I think a healthy minded person would one, realize that two, make changes if they wanted to, but three, if they couldn't, they'd probably have an honest conversation with that person and the dynamic of the relationship may change. In a love bombing relationship, when that person, when the narcissist can't be who they said they were, they then blame you for the reason that they're not that person. And that's the difference is that this whole entire thing gets turned around. So then you start having to love bomb them to keep them in the relationship. When this all started about with in this other way where you thought that they were somebody else. And now you want that person back and you're addicted to that person, that person that's on the pedestal that you saw their potential for, because I know you saw the best parts of them. But when this gets turned around, that's not it at all. Now you do anything to get that other person back. So now you have to love bomb them constantly in the relationship. And if you ever bring up, this is not what you said, this is not who you are. You put you like you said you wanted like to get married and have kids. And now you think that I'm ridiculous, you know, then it'd be like, well, what you want too much, you know, everything is, will be turned around and put on you. So I actually believe that that's why love bombing is so dangerous because the motive of love bombing is meant to manipulate you. A narcissist and a sociopath and a psychopath and all these, you know, disordered behaviors will do it with the intent of controlling you, even though the relationship might start out feeling romantic and it might feel loving, that is not where it ends up. If I reflect back on my client base, the most amount of clients that I have or the majority of clients I have get stuck in the leaving part because there was something amazing that they're so afraid to let go of, but they probably haven't seen that amazing thing in a long time. And now you're stuck in a relationship that is fake. And by the time that you realize you are so invested in this relationship, that it feels impossible to leave, but incredibly, incredibly painful to even stay in it. Love bombing falls into the cycle of abuse. And so there's a cycle of abuse and domestic violence. There's also a cycle of abuse for narcissistic relationships, which is basically the same thing, but it's a little different because it has to do with how the narcissist discards a person. And so we're not going to go so far deep into the narcissistic cycle of abuse, but I did do an episode about this. So I'll link up in the show notes, but basically there's love bombing. So they win you over, the partner feels dependent, then it goes to devaluing. So at one point, all that affection will turn to criticizing you and then goes to discarding where they get rid of you. They leave the relationship and then they hoover. So they try to follow you. They try to get you back. And so that cycle is not always emotionally abusive, but it does absolutely lead to physical abuse. And so it's very dangerous. And so what do you do, right? If you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I sounded like the people that, you know, you quoted at the beginning and this sounds exactly like my relationship and I'm absolutely addicted to their potential. I think that you need to educate yourself. So I would go look up the cycle of narcissistic abuse. I listened to the podcast there are a lot of resources out there. If you put narcissistic cycle of abuse in Google, it will come up. Go on Pinterest and type it in and then look at the diagram and read it and see if that's your relationship. The first step to leaving is getting right with the reality. So get right with the reality. You will not want to see it, but you have to. And so 
getting right with reality is so important because that's going to give you the confidence and the tools to leave. And so after you get right with reality, I would start to explore what a trauma bond is. And this is what I talk about in my relationship recovery course. We get right with what's happening. We start to understand what's happening. And then we need to get the tools to leave, right? So in order to leave, you need to really begin to create space for yourself so you can think for yourself. And if you're trauma bonded, you're likely not thinking for yourself. You're thinking disordered thoughts because you're so stuck in this cycle. And so we need to begin to set boundaries. But boundaries don't really work with an abusive relationship. So through setting boundaries or learning how to set them with specifically toxic people will help you create enough space so you can begin to walk away. You need to take time away from this person mentally, but also physically. That's what I call re-regulating yourself. It's something I talk about a lot. And then once you do that, you can really ask yourself, is this person the person that they promised me? Is this the person, have I gotten the person in this relationship that was here three months ago? Is the person that I wanted to be with Growing, evolving, getting kinder. Do they care that they hurt me? Or do they blame me when they hurt me? Can I have a conversation with this person? All If I state how I feel, am I told that I'm wrong? All of these things are really important to ask yourself. Because you deserve to feel loved and you deserve to be able to have conversations. You deserve to work through issues with somebody. And if the person that they promised is so out of sight, then I think you really need to ask yourself, was that just Stella? Is that even real? So if it just started, what do you do? If you're realizing this and it had just started, what do you do? Get right with reality now. So if you are month four, month five, month six, month seven, and you realize that this has just started to shift, what do you do? Spend time getting right, right with reality. What? Who was this person month one? What did they tell me about themselves? What have I seen? Where do I envision this going right now? How does this person handle difficult conversations? Are there elements of control in this relationship, even if they're minor? Get extremely clear. If you've been in an abusive relationship before, then you'll probably see it. And this is your time to get out because you know, if you've been here before, you know, it's easier now. Not to say that it's easy, but easier right now. But use this time to get right with reality and write it down. Because if you end up staying in this relationship, you'll at least have something to go back to and remind yourself, but get very clear. If you're catching this early, get extremely clear. I promise you, it's going to save you so much pain. If you feel like something's changing, trust it. And if you have the courage to leave now, or if you want to leave now, or if you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm out. Not doing the cycle again. This is your time. You deserve consistency. You deserve to feel like whoever, what they promised you and who they said they were is who they are. You don't need to love somebody's potential anymore. So I would start to create some space, little things, not responding to texts immediately, maybe having one day for yourself, journaling, talking to friends, beginning to create a little bit mental space so you can say, is the person that I'm dating now the person who claimed who they were month one? You are deep in this relationship. You have no idea who this person is anymore, but they absolutely are not that person they promised and who they said they were and who treated you with respect and you feel so lost. Then I really would spend some time getting right with reality, which is what I touched on before. Really spend some time thinking about who is this person? How do I feel? Where is this relationship going? Am I happier? Do I see this person wanting to work with me? Are they willing to go to therapy? 
Am I in the cycle of abuse? I call this getting right with the reality because I think a lot of times we can write down, you know, here are all the things that I want and here are all the things that I think, you know, and here are things I value. And then we draw squiggly lines over to like what we're actually getting. And that doesn't mean it's not painful to leave and to acknowledge it. But the first step comes from getting super right with the reality so you can have that confidence. Because when you say, this does not work for me, a narcissist and an abuser are going to turn it around and blame you. And so you need to be prepared for that. And it's not about being like, no, fuck you. It's you. It's about actually not even needing to respond because you're so clear within yourself that you can't be gaslit anymore. I know that this was a lot and I know that this is a heavy topic. And so if you're listening to this and you feel validated, where should you go next? There are a few podcasts on that I have, and a lot of these are actually really, they're at the very, very beginning of my podcasting journey, but I would go back and I believe the second episode is, will they change? Listen to that. There's a podcast episode about trauma bonding right after that. I would listen to that. I have a podcast on the narcissistic cycle of abuse and the domestic violence cycle of abuse. I'd listen to them and ask yourself, I see myself here. And then get support. Support is so important because without the support, you're going to second guess yourself and you're not going to think that you're doing, you know, the right thing. And you deserve to feel like you can have a space to have a clear head. And so if it's not someone like me, there are coaches out there. There are therapists out there. There are trauma informed therapists, which is what I recommend. And there are groups. So I know myself included, like my, the course that I run includes a free validation call with me. You and I will speak for 30 minutes. So you'll have all this information on the reality of what you're going through and how to set boundaries. And then you can talk to me after you've kind of learned all that and tried all that. And we can try and figure out where we need to go, you know, and what I can do to help better support you. But support is there. Some of the courses that I've seen other people run that don't really have a support option, I think can be quite challenging because you want that. Like you're going to want some extra support. So I would choose a program that has that, whether it's a group, something. I hope that this was helpful. I hope this puts some things into perspective. And so if you need support, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me at emotionalabusecoach.com on Instagram at emotionalabusecoach. And you can email me, Jessica at jessicanightcoaching.com. Mm-hmm.